In the last lecture, we talked about A union B and how uh, and what this meant. Well, anytime you see A and then this U and then B, you read it as A union B. And let's say we had a set A and then we had a set B, wherein in set A you have the elements 1, 3, 3, and in set B you have the elements 3, 5, 1. If we were to unionize them, then we would say that, well, A union B is 1, 3, 5. Uh, a union B is a set containing all elements of A and also all elements of B. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention uh, last time is that order and repetition does not matter. Now, I know this looks like a pi, but it's a double T, so just so that you're not confused. So, order, you could have the elements in any order you want. And you can repeat them however many times you want. So what I have done here, I have shown you two sets which are equivalent. 1, 2, 3 is the same as 1, 1, 1, 3, 2. As you can see, I have repeated 1 three times. And I also switched the order of 3 and 2. Uh, and you can see that here 2 comes first and then 3 comes after. Here 3 comes first and then 2 comes after. So repetition and order does not matter, for sets at least. Now, one thing that I did not uh, introduce uh, last time is intersection. So let's look into this. Oh, okay. All right. So let's say you open up your real analysis textbook and you see this. You see A, this weird upside down U, and then B. What does this mean? In English, this is how you read it. A intersect B. So this is called an intersection. And so let's say you have a set A and a set B. A intersect B is the set um, containing all elements in A which are also in B. So how you want to think of this is this. So let's say you have a set A, which is 1, 2, 3. And then you have a set B, which is 2, 3, 4. Now, your teacher or somebody else comes along and asks you that what is A intersect B? So what you do is how, at least I do it, it makes my life easier, is you underline the elements that are present in both sets. So is, one is clearly not present in both sets. Well, we have two. Two is present in both sets. Three is present in both sets. And one and four aren't, so we wouldn't underline them. Now, you understand that both of them are, both two and three are present within both sets. So, A intersect B, as I said before, basically intersects them. It, it takes out a specific portion that is present within both sets. It, it, it's intersecting the sets. So what you want to do is that when it asks you to write down what A intersect B is, you want to write elements that are present in both sets. So that would be two and then three. Now, it could be something a little bit more intricate. So let's do another example. So this is an example. Uh, you could have uh, A is pi, E, um, I, and then you have B, another set, equal to being pi, 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 and then I. So now, they ask you, what's, so th the first question that they ask you is, what is A intersect B? And then they ask you, what is A union B? So let's do this. So for this one, for for this one, um, I'll, this is the answer. So the answer is right here. So for intersects, you just want to look at um, entities. So elements. Entities is a more fancy word. Ent okay, let me just write. Entity means a thing. Anytime I say... Uh, entity, it just means thing. Of course, you probably know this, but just in case somebody doesn't, I don't want to use language that you don't understand. I want to make sure that everything is perfectly crystal, cl crystal clear to you. So A intersect B would be something like this. You, as we did above in our example 
uh, here, you want to look at both of the sets and you want to underline things that are present within both sets. Well, pi is clearly present within both sets. I is clearly uh, within both sets. So our A intersect B will look like pi and I. Now, this is the same as repeating pi as however many times you want and repeating i as however many times you want to repeat it. Um, as I said before, order and repetition doesn't matter because it's the same set. So this would be the same as saying, I don't know, like i and then pi. You can even reverse the order and it would still be the same. Now, let's do the other one. Now, let's do, um, let me get blue here. So let's do a union b. So the answer for this is right here. So for union, as we said before, union is a set that contains elements of A as well as elements of B. So a union, a union B basically connects them, unionizes them. So you want to connect these. So the, basically these two sets are almost equivalent except for the fact that set A has an E in there. So you could just write, well, pi, E, and then I. That would be your union. Now you could, again, as I said before, this is equivalent to saying pi as however many times you want to, and e, and then i as well. And you could reverse the order. This is the same, okay, that's the wrong bracket. So it's the same as uh, i, repeat uh, however many times you want, and then e, and then pi. So what I'm telling you is that if you have a set, if you have some sort of set, then there are infinite equivalent sets to any given set and infinite equivalent sets because you could just repeat them uh, however many times you want to and you could switch up the order and 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 you're basically permuting uh your sets and uh, well, well, well that that's covered in the uh, the permutations and combinations unit which i will cover uh in the functions uh advanced functions series however for now all you need to know is that sets for sets you can repeat them you can uh, change their order. And as of this moment, you should be able to unionize them and intersect them. So that's your main takeaway from uh, this specific lecture.